We just had a chance to do the crystal partridge caddis. Now we're gonna do the crystal partridge elk. Don't say any of those too fast. That's a real tongue twister. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna do the same kind of a deal. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, uh, do a dubbing loop to start off with. And you notice I'm just starting with my finger. And then of course, then I'm gonna grab uh, my debit tool, which I have uh, lost. Right, I, I finally got this table looking like uh, my table at home, which is rather a mess. Uh, I often worry about fly tires uh, that are uh, neat. Okay, here we go. Gary used to say he had a, uh, a disdain for neatness in fly tying. And uh, I have to tend to agree with him uh, when it comes to the materials. All right, now I'm putting some uh, dubbing uh, in there, and we're going to use uh, kind of a, a brownish, reddish brown, and that's kind of up to you. Now I'm going to actually just run this right through the wax, and as you can see, it just kind of picks it up inside the dubbing loop. But we're also going to get some more of our rainbow thread, and uh, it's kicking around here also. Boy, I'm just losing everything today. Okay, here we go. We're got, cutting off a, a strand of that. We're going to tie that in also. And we'll just take it and add it right into the dubbing loop along with the hair. And we'll just spin it. And there it goes. Ooh, what does that look good? Look at that. Look how that comes up. And it's a little bit thicker up here. I'm going to move some of that, but we're going to have a little slight taper to it. And we're going to move it forward. Even caddis have a taper. You know, their bodies are tapered. Most of the insects are. They start out thin at the abdomen and then move towards the thorax. Now, if it takes too long, let me just give you a little trick. Take those uh, rotary hackle pliers that we had, and we just tie those on uh, right there, or clamp it on, not tie it on, clamp it on. And you can really roll on the on doing it. Really works you right in there. Notice that the body's nice and sparse, and we're ready to go. And that uh, we've really this is just really durable. I can't tell you what that, I mean there's no way that that's going to come undone. You can do that with your nymphs. Uh, I like the little binder in that because it sparkles. Once it gets wet you can see right there the sparkle coming through. Okay now we're going to go back just like we did in the uh, uh, the partridge crystal caddis. Now where did this name crystal caddis come from? I used to call it an Amy's caddis but then we have the Amy stone Amy's aunt, and there were too many Amy's in there. It got confusing. And Umpqua said, look, the name of this fly is Crystal Caddis, and that's the name that they gave it. And I like it. I think it's a great name. Even though we're not using Crystal uh, Flash, we are using what? We are using Rainbow Thread. Now, what about if you can't find Rainbow Thread? I'm sure that you're probably thinking, oh, man, this guy's giving me a pet task. Well, it uh, Dan Bailey is the distributor. You can always seem to get it from him. But you also can use uh, Flashaboo Accent Mirage. Boy, that's another mouthful. Okay, now what, we're, what are we doing? We're building up that uh, post again. More that side posting. And moving right up the fly. We're moving along right here. I, I'm uh, getting to the end of our fly tying session. We have a Thai food restaurant right down the street, and I can smell the food clear to here. So we'll, we'll really get, get through this fly. This is actually a pretty fast fly to tie. Now again, try to find a balance about how much of this you want. Uh, you can really overdo it. I don't know if you can underdo it. I mean, if you underdo it, you don't really get much of the effect. Now we're going to put elk hair on. Now I want you to think in your mind about half of what you're going to use on an elk hair caddis. This is not a high floater, not, although it will work in uh, fast water, and you can see it. But will it, uh, I'm trying to keep this low. Uh, think, of it, think of it as a parachute elk hair caddis, but one is going to ride right. Now, why did I do this? It was actually a suggestion of Mike Lawson. He said, Jack, he says, you know, we have uh, that partridge caddis, and I, I'm tying it now 
with a, a calf body hair, and they call it an easy caddis, but it's still hard to see in that fast water. We really need a parachute elk hair caddis. And he says, that crystal caddis would really fit the bill for our guide. Okay, now what I did uh, when I'm working with that hair is, again, I, I, uh, I pulled out all the, the yucky stuff, and then I did this, this uh, hand stacking, and that, of course, made it really a lot nicer. Uh, now, right now, let's put up against our our gape. You know, it can be just a little thinner. I think it's just to get a little bit too much. So what am I going to do? I'm going to grab on the tips right here and pull on it until it thins it down. Now, I'm about to show you some things that are going to help you on all your tying. One of the reasons I want to take this in a little bit of detail. Now, notice I'm rubbing my fingers together right here. See how that spreads out the hair? That flattens it out so when I tie it down, it's going to be nice and flat and spread out. It's going to flare out rather than be on like a streamer wing. I watched too many elk or caddis ride uh, on their sides. So what we're going to do is, is I'm going to trim it. Now I've kind of guesstimated what I think my size ought to be. You don't want to have it too long. Now I'm, I think I've got it right. I'm putting it down so it flares out and tying it in. Now one of the things you got to watch, see how that's starting to move that wing around. And that's, that's another thing to watch. Uh, again, this has got to be nice and sparse. And what am I going to do at this point in time? I'm going to do the same thing we did on the Amy's Ant. And I'm going to put a little of that cement in there and let it soak in. So as we tie, that's going to really cement the hair in so they never come out. Now, right here, uh, you don't want to make sure that cement gets right in there. That we want it to make sure it, that it's just in the butt ends. You might want to put it in with a bodkin so you get it in nice. Now, when we get done, see how that's flared out? That's why when I pushed it down, it's very important. Nice and flares out. Now, we're going to go and uh, put on some uh, dubbing and build up a thorax so that we can tie this fly. And I may go in there. If I, if, you know, right now, if I think I've got too much that we've laid in, don't be hesitant to, to trim it right out there because the dubbing is going to go right over it and it's not going not gonna to make any difference. Now, we'll come underneath it when we get done. If you see any of those fibers, just trim them out. Okay, we're going to get some more. Now, occasionally what I'll do is uh, I'll, uh, I will add a different color to the thorax just to kind of break up the color, but not, uh, this is a little darker. Now I put this on a little thicker because I want that thorax fairly thick. As you can see right there, I've got some more in my right hand. So I have it just the way I want it. There we go. I'm building up the uh, post a little bit higher. Again with our side posting, just extending it beyond the thorax. Now this, uh, Again, I can go back and I can use uh, a brown dyed, or I could go and use just a plain grizzly, which, uh, which uh, I could. I just use the grizzly, and you can see that'll make a nice fly too. We'll go back with the brown. I like the brown. Could you use just a regular brown hackle? Sure. You know, but I'm, I'm really kind of partial to uh, barred, dyed barred grizzly because it's so much more like an insect. You can notice just already looks just like an like an insect with that barring in it. That's why I've always thought that uh, grizzly was so popular uh, because of its ability to uh, look more like an insect. So many of our insects are that color. Okay, we built that up. Again, now this I think you can really see how we do the parachutes here. Continually doing parachutes. I'm going to brush a little more cement on. So it's right on that post. It's going to help cement the hackle in. Again, uh, we're going to get our rotary hackle pliers. This happens to be a Tamco ball bearing one's real nice and smooth. Several brands out there. And notice I'm going around it just like we did before. And right down to the end. And a nice, nice color contrast with that darker grizzly, as you can see. Now we're going to switch hands again, pull up, tie it right into the body. I think you're going to really be able to see r right to where that hackle is tied in. And notice that I'm color coordinating the uh, body uh, to uh, the, th uh, the thread or the thread to the body so that uh, 
we don't have to kid. Could you add more dubbing there if you needed to? Sure could. I'm going to trim that down a little bit. And we'll, we've got a very sparse, and that's going to, uh, very sparse elk hair, and that's going to really float. It's going to give you a great coloration. And this is a pattern that, that's just going to replace some of your elk hair caddis uh, uh, flies and give you a lot more color variation. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Plus, you're going to be able to see it better, too. It's going to ride right in the surface film so well. And let me just show you what that will do. Ooh, doesn't that look like a killer? Put it back in there. There we, there we go, which is the elk hair crystal caddis.